Howdy, everyone, and happy birthday to the podcast, and happy birthday to me as well. This is the birthday edition of the podcast, and I am talking to you from the future into the past. And obviously, if you can't tell listening to it here in the future, I'm a little bit delayed, and that's because uh, I had the best birthday present uh, just a couple of days before this recording was scheduled to go out, the birth of my son. So uh, with that and moving a lot of other things, that's been the reason why I've been delayed in the process of getting podcast episodes out. But rest assured, we definitely have enough to last us through the end of the summer, and I hope to be resuming new recordings and new episodes and interviews with you soon. So with that in mind, thank you so much for your support. One year of the podcast, so amazing, so awesome. Without further ado, let's head into another episode of Sidekicks and Sidequests. Orc the Bardic Paladin, who sings and plays again. He tells the tales of glory, and weaves a magic story. He'll join you at your table, and ask you to share a fable. Heroes of humble origin, villains who must be fought again. No matter their skill or prowess, the people in life are countless. So we pray you heed our request. Enjoy this tale of sidekicks and sidequests. Sidequests and sidequests. Sidequests and sidequests. Episode 43, Zalda the Manticore Spy Boss. Welcome to Sidekicks and Sidequests the Dungeons and Dragons podcast that helps to put humans back into humanity and breathe life into your campaign NPCs with backstory and bravado. That's right, we're building a world, one character at a time. I am your host, Kurt Krenwelgi, the Bardic Paladin, and I'll be joining Elvia Jablinski's table in the Levitating Platter. <laughs> to another episode of Sidekicks and Sidequests, the best unofficial Dungeons and Dragons podcast, if I say so, in my perfectly biased opinion. Uh, I am joined for the first time by a guest who was the inspiration for an NPC on this show. So why don't I turn the mic over and ask our guest to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what it is that you do. Hi, I'm Elvia Jablinski. Um, I am uh, an orchestra teacher in Texas, obviously. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm uh, Anson's wife. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't know if I have to say that. <laughs> I think our listeners have great context clues, and uh, it, no, it's great to finally have the real life inspiration be a guest on the show. And so, truly, now people have a a voice to put with the awesome character that hopefully has already been running around in their campaign worlds uh, by now at this point. It was <laughs> a really cool character. I did like it a lot. I listened to that episode, and I was like, man, that's that's really awesome. Yeah. I quite enjoyed it as well. Awesome. So I guess I have to ask, do you currently or have you ever played D&D before? I have never played d and I've had friends that were very into D&D, um, but I've never, well, it's not that I've like never wanted to, it's that I've never been invited to, or you know what I mean? Like, like I have friends that have played it, but I've never been like invited. Oh, okay. That makes any sense, so. Like, I would play it. I wouldn't mind. It sounds cool. Why not? Right. Well, definitely, you have to share this episode with all your friends now, so that way they know, like, guys, the invitation has always been there. It's just you've never given me an invitation, so... Since this show is called Sidekicks and Side Quests, we like to focus on not the main characters, so this particular question is, do you have a favorite NPC, a non-player character from a video game or whatever, and why are they your favorite? 
so right now I'm like really into Animal Crossing and it's so funny because it all started with like my students during this last semester of orchestra they were all playing Animal Crossing instead of doing their like Google assignments and so mm. they were like, you know they were like miss you just you have to play this Animal Crossing game and I was like okay I'll try it so I bought it and I've been hooked since and so <laughs> you get little villagers that you know get to live on your island and there was one villager his name is Lion and mm -hmm. he was one of like the last villagers that I got um, he like seemed really pompous he was just like he was always wearing really uppity clothes and looked like a little like a little Mozart lion it was really strange and he would like talk in an accent but he is my favorite character now and he's just like the sweetest little thing and he's always like anytime he sees me on the island he's like oh I've been thinking about you they call me Lionel the summoner or something like super cute like that and he's always giving me really cute gifts and stuff so he's like become my absolute favorite character in that game that's awesome i have never played a single animal crossing game so i know it is one of the most popular games sweeping the world since we're all inside with extended time to play video games so <laughs> yeah it's nice to know that uh lionel and all your other villagers are able to bring you such delight in these times so that's that's, true. that's cool does he compose songs as well or not I, I wish he did. Like, I wish that these characters had, like, a little bit more, like, more abilities. But no, he just, he sings all the time. And it's Aww. so freaking cute. There's a um, a character uh, called K.K. Slider, who is, like, mm -hmm. the musician of the island. And so Lionel always gets super excited when he comes on Saturdays because he gets to, you know, K.K. Slider does performances on Saturdays. Um, so you can always just catch Lionel, like, just sitting by the river and like singing it's the cutest thing ever I just I go crazy every time I see him <laughs> And I have to commend you and Anson because uh, I've seen on social media that you guys, as both accomplished musicians, have taken some of the themes from Animal Crossing. You've actually done little videos. And so I have to say those are pretty cool. I think I was trying to I think I threw my hat in the ring for uh, Country Roads by John Denver since I've been playing a lot of Fallout 76. So, yeah, no, we've gotten a lot of requests. I think, you know. I just, I forget that Anson has like a full-time job and is like yeah. working throughout the summer. And I'm like, hey, you should arrange this. And he's like, Elvia, I have to work. And I'm like, oh yeah, so. <laughs> See, what he's really telling you is, Elvia, use your music theory skills and go ahead and arrange this and then just become a social media superstar because you do these covers, oh, these really gosh. cute covers. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Awesome. And so now we turn to the side quest portion of the show. Do you have a favorite side quest from a game or a movie, etc.? And why is it your favorite side quest? I think my favorite is probably having to... There are four fossils that are hidden in the island every day. Okay. And you have to find them and give them to the museum owner, which is Blathers, who is an owl. He's super cute. So I think that's probably my favorite is having to look for the fossils, give them to Blathers, have him assess them, and then let us know like, oh, we already have this fossil in our museum. Or, uh, you know, no, this is a new find and I'll make sure to display it, you know, immediately. So oh, that's yeah, cool. that's probably my favorite. Yeah, I mean, you you get this awesome museum on the island. It's so cool. And it, it has like different types of fish, different types of insects, uh, fossils, of course. And then art is the last like uh, tier of the museum. So okay. it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you get to feel a little bit like uh, Indiana Jones or Laura yes. Croft as you're yes. finding these fossils. Yes, it's the coolest thing. Like I just, you know, it makes you feel so like useful, like really you're sitting at home on your couch for like six hours a day but on Animal Crossing you're like oh my god I fixed all my gardens I build my museum I'm like finding fossils and you just feel so useful <laughs> right hello everyone I just want to take a moment to tell you about my first ever sponsor plus one exp Tony Vicinda is the mastermind behind this trifecta of triumph he produces tabletop themed beard balms beard themed tabletop rpgs and helps to support additional tabletop content creators on Patreon. Now, each of his beard balms is flavored after the basic stats from D&D. Do you need some strength for your beard? Why, apply and feel yourself empowered with the scent of pine and cedar with a minty edge. If you're feeling rather charismatic, 
apply a balm of sweet smelling amber, clove, and pipe tobacco. Each one of these balms is unique in its makeup. And of course, don't forget, Tony developed a whole RPG that allows you to harness your facial ferocity and hair-raising adventures. You can snag a copy of that game as well as a style stencil, enamel pen, or a map of the Whiskerverse. And finally, aside from all of the awesome interviews and actual plays Tony has on Plus One EXP, every purchase you make feeds into the Plus One Forward program, which supports small indie content creators to continue making amazing tabletop RPG content. So head on over to plusonexp.com. That's plus one spelled out and exp.com in order to shop for these balms and games and more. And when you go to check out, use my affiliate code Randolph to save some coin on your purchase and to help support sidekicks and side quests. How else do you think our tavern keeper at the Levitating Platter is going to keep his silver beard so awesome? Once again, the code is Randolph, like how it's spelled on episode two and his write up in order to save on your order and help support the show. So thank you so much. And now back to the podcast. And then as we round out the personal interview section, what are you passionate about and why? Let's see. Well, I'm really passionate about my job. You know, I love teaching orchestra. I love using it as a medium to get close to the kids and really help them out. And so I'm just, I'm really passionate about like our youth. I want to make sure that they get a comfortable space in school where they can feel, you know, they can be themselves and they feel that their voice matters. Um, And so I just, you know, I love, I love making music with them all day, obviously. That's, that's the fun part of my job. But what I'm really passionate about is just getting close to them hearing them out building those like really strong relationships with them so yeah it's a re- that's the rewarding part of my job you know is seeing these kids grow up and like become incredible men and women and like go out and like do incredible things in the world so that's definitely my my biggest passion so not only is elvia immortalized as a npc in a tabletop rpg game but now she's immortalized in the hearts and souls of these youth that she's educating through music yeah kids are the best you know well sometimes but you know kids are they're they're really sweet so yeah that's awesome well i think we've learned quite a bit about our guests so i think it's time to head into some npc creation So now, before we started rolling, you said that you would like to randomly generate a character today. So I've got my tables, I've got my questions pulled up, so if you've got some dice, virtual or otherwise, let's go ahead and roll the 20-sided die, the d20, to figure out what is the name of the character that we are working with. The name of the character. Two. Zalda. It rolled to two. Zalda. Z-A-L-D-A. Zalda. Zalda. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, and now we get to figure out what is the ancestry or the race of this character. So this, we get to roll a D100. 14. A manticore. What is that? Okay, Uh, I believe (laughs) manticore originates from uh, mythology, but I know in the context of D&D, it's like, think of like a giant, well, did you see Onward? No, I haven't seen it yet. Pull that up on Disney Plus and watch it, because there is a character in there called the manticore, which isn't too far off, but in D&D game terms, it's kind of like a monstrous creature. It looks like a giant lion. It has rows of razor sharp teeth and it has wings. And it has like a a stinger tail. So it's actually a monster creature, but it can talk. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Very scary. Yeah, but you're Zalda. So wait, but it says it's large monstrosity, but it's lawful evil. What does that mean? Uh, Okay. So let's see, crash course. So as far as alignments or morality is concerned in the game, there's a mechanic in place for like, certain magic items or certain conditions from spells depend on whether you're lawful or neutral or chaotic. So think of lawful, neutral, and chaos as far as like lawful is I have a personal code or there is the law of the land. I'm going to follow that. Neutral, mm, I don't really care about law or chaos. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. Chaos, I'm just, you know, I'm thriving on just 
spontaneity and randomness. I oppose law. And then obviously good, neutral, and evil. And so basically uh, a three by three square where each of these kind of all fit. So to say that you're lawful evil, you're someone who is of a evil persuasion, but you have laws or rules or a code that you follow in order to live and thrive. But that's not to say that if you wanted to take your manticore a different direction, you could be a good manticore. Uh, you'd certainly be a rarity, but it's <laughs> completely possible. Okay. Okay. I think my students have talked about that before because they've asked me like, are you like chaotic good, chaotic evil? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, children. Let's now, go go unpack your instrument. <laughs> yeah. So now you're clued in. So now you understand what they're talking about. This all comes from Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. So now we have to figure out for our manticore named Zalda, what is their job or role in society? So let's go ahead and roll just a regular 10-sided dice, a d10, to figure out what their job is. 10. 10, okay. They are a spy. So they're spying for someone or something. And okay. then the last thing we get to roll for a bit before we get to just randomly think of stuff, uh, we have to figure out how old this manticore is. So why don't you go ahead and roll a d8? D8? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Oh, oh, uh, an eight. Okay. Eight sided die. It looks like two pyramids stacked on <laughs> yeah. top of each other. Let's see. Six. Six. An elder. So fairly along in life. So this Zalda has been around for a while, suffice it to say. So now that we've rolled some dice, we've got some blanks filled in. Let's describe the physical appearance of Zalda. So I have sent you a reference of what a manticore in D&D terms looks like, but how would you characterize the physical appearance of Zalda in particular? Okay. Well, we're going to say Zalda is a girl, right? Can we yeah. do that? Yeah. Okay. Of course. So in the picture here that you're sending me, uh, this manticore has like spikes coming out of his mane. I don't like that. So we're going to make those. We're going to make her mane very pretty. It's going to be really nice and curly and red and white wild looking. Um, okay. The wings are cool. Wings are cool. But the tail, the the little stinger tail has spikes. I don't like that. So we're going to take those spikes away. Oh, so okay. she's going to look, <laughs> she's going to look fierce, but not as intimidating as this large monstrosity of a manticore that you sent me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So a little softer in physical yes. appearance. So she can yes. still, she can still protect herself if she needs to, but she's not like overwhelmingly intimidating. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, what three adjectives do you think best describe Zalda then? Mm, we'll say fierce, wise, wise, and hmm, courageous. Fierce, wise, and courageous. Okay. Very cool. All right. Now we get to go back to rolling some dice. We get to figure out what is a particular valuable item, piece of lore, a secret, or maybe an ideal or concept uh, that Zalda ascribes to. So we're going to roll the four sided dice first to figure out which of those categories it is. One. OK, that's an item. So now you get to roll just a regular six sided dice and we get to figure out what is the magic item that Zalda has. Six. OK. So this answer was provided by our previous guest, Leah Murray. So Zalda is in possession of a pair of leather cuffs or bracers that make you faster. Oh. Okay, so she has those in her possession. Maybe she uses them or maybe she just has them around as a particular piece of treasure. And now we get to figure out what is a particular side quest that Zalda is willing to provide a group of players. Let's go ahead and roll the 12-sided dice and figure out what is the quest. Six. Six. Okay, this answer was provided by previous guest Brady Effler. Steal a prized cow. So now that we've uh, kind of got some ideas... Certainly, we need to think of, you know, the motivations behind this. Zalda is asking the heroes to steal someone's prized cow. Does this have to do more with her background as a spy? Or is she looking for a snack? Or what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say that she is, it's part of her spy job. She's doing it because she's a spy. Okay. So this particular cow is withholding information that Zalda needs, or what do you think? Can this cow talk? Uh, I mean, on their own, <laughs> cows 
can't talk, <laughs> but if you cast the speak with animals spell, it is possible to speak with a cow. So why not? Let's, I mean, a dungeon let's... master can rule anything. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the reason why this cow is prized is because it can talk. It's the only yeah. cow of its kind that can talk, maybe. Oh my gosh, that's so much power. Yes, so let's say that the cow witnessed something. And oh. so... Yes, it witnessed something, and so we're having to figure out exactly what they witnessed. Okay, and that's why they need to steal the cow, bring yes. it to Zalda, so Zalda can question the cow, and then after that, I suppose, you know, maybe the cow gets returned, maybe Zalda eats the cow, because she doesn't want any loose ends, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, she is fierce, you know, and a cow is a tasty snack, I'm sure, so. Sure. <laughs> So what is going to be the reward then for the heroes, for the player characters that successfully retrieve the cow and bring it to Zalda? Hmm. Could Zalda give them the cuffs that she owns to like make them faster? Yeah, certainly. If she wants to award them the pair of cuffs, she could do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so she's willing to reward those uh, leather cuffs. You know, for a dungeon master, then that would mean there's some kind of magic item. So they'll have to figure out if it's something from the book or something they'll have to make up. But that's cool. You know, it's all about it's all a game of pretend anyway. So but now we have to think of the flip side of things. So, you know, someone has deployed Zalda in their game, hoping that the player characters are going to take the bait and go on the adventure. What is going to be the consequence of failure or what's going to be the consequence of refusing to even do the quest? Can she eat them? She could totally get into a fight with them. I mean, she has, in the game, stats. So if she's a regular manticore, by all means, you could use those. Or maybe you want to make Zalda a little tougher. You can obviously boost the stats as well and make it into a full-fledged uh, boss fight if you want. Yeah, we would make it into a fight, okay. for sure. <laughs> I would understand if that's the consequence if they just outright refuse to do a quest. Is there a difference if they fail? Like they honestly go and try and get the cow, but through incompetence or dumb luck or whatever, the cow eludes them. Is she going to react differently to that? Or is she still going to fight them? Like you failed me for the last time. I think she's more compassionate than that. So oh. we can, so we can, uh, let's see. So if they refuse... She gets into a fight with them. But if they fail, hmm. is there like some sort of like, well, she's not a witch. So is there, is there something that she can like do to them that will temporarily disable them from like being able to do other side quests or anything like that? I mean, it's not to say that perhaps Zalda picked up magical abilities along the way that she could do that by all means she is you know a spy so she must belong to some sort of organization and if she has rank within that organization she could be like oh i understand you failed no problem no harm no foul but secretly she's like hey spy organization i had these dinguses try and do a mission for me and they failed i need you guys to tail them i need you to make their life difficult you know we need to teach them a lesson for messing up or something like that yeah, that sounds a little a little evil, but I kind of like it. So we'll do that. <laughs> well, maybe one person's evil is just good-natured mischievousness to someone else. <laughs> so yeah, that's fun. I like that. So I think we've had a couple of NPCs on this show have that as a consequence of like, oh, if you mess up, I'm just going to follow you around or, you know, I'm just going to mess with you in subtle ways, but not anything really harmful, especially like uh -huh. not as far as like, I am not going to do this. I refuse. OK, well, I have to kill you now because you've outright <laughs> refused me. So. Um, so what are the goals and motivations of Zalda and how do they affect her personality? Gosh, this is deep. Let's see. We're trying to make well-rounded characters on this show. What is, what are her motivations? Yeah, what are her goals and motivations? Obviously, we know she's a spy. So, you know, is there anything more driving that, perhaps? Let's see. Maybe she just wants to make the Dungeons & Dragons world a better place. I don't know. <laughs> and her motivation is to, you know, fight evil, but in a smart way. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I that's, that's fine. I mean, 
certainly, you know, if you leave her as the default lawful evil, certainly she could view other people as evil in her mind. So if she's trying to make the world safer from ideologies that oppose her own, you know, that's certainly a goal or motivation. So that's good conflict because some people could see that as like, oh, clearly she's doing evil. But then other people are like, well, no, she's kind of doing something to try and make the world great, even if it's not by the best means necessarily. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, okay. that's her main motivation. Okay. And so because she's dedicated to her personal goal of ridding what she deems as evil, how does this affect her general personality? We've talked about how she's fierce, she's wise, and she's compassionate. So that's what makes her those things then because of these goals? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, that, that's fine. Uh, uh, how does Zalda interact with people uh, as far as her way of speaking or acting? Does she have any idiosyncrasies does she talk to people in different ways i'm sure maybe she has a different way of talking to people within her spy organization and then maybe she has a different way of talking to just her food and maybe she has a different way of talking to you know just people who come by to ask her questions or something I think she would generally be very civil. She speaks very formal. You know, she's a she's a savvy lady. You know, she's educated. She's wise. She is nice to everybody at the beginning. But if you mess with her, that's when the mm. rows of teeth come out. Okay. And I'm guessing as a spy, she probably knows the thieves can't language, which is, I don't know, a lot of people like to think of it as kind of like Cockney English, but a language that only like thieves and rogues and smugglers and stuff know how to talk. So to other people, it kind of sounds like gibberish. But if you're a thief or something like that, you could easily understand what she's saying. So do you think that would be a feasible language for her to know? Like... Ooh, since she's dealing in thieves or maybe she has a special spy language that her spy organization speaks in codes or something like that yeah yeah that would be really cool if she had a that ability to like listen to thieves and understand them that would be really cool what impact has zalda made on the world how has she shaped the local area that she's in does she have a current problem that prevents her from being an even bigger player on the stage Oh my goodness. Let's see. I don't know. This is very involved. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't know. What do you think? You help me out here. What do you think? <laughs> sure. She's probably someone high up in the echelons of the spy organization, I would imagine, right? For sure. Okay. So would you consider her like a spy boss? Or is she just like kind of like upper management, upper middle management or? No, she's definitely a boss. Okay, so she's a local boss then. So, mm -hmm. okay, so she probably has a network of other spy bosses within the organization she's working with to coordinate information. So it sounds like maybe she's even the head of a local spy organization within the area then. So she probably has a bunch of people who work for her then. Yes, but she's not afraid to get in there and like get her hands dirty too you know what i mean like she's not one of those bosses that like has everybody else do the dirty work for her she's willing to get in there too okay yeah certainly and if a manticore is showing up to do something people would take notice and probably most common people common townsfolk would run away because they'd be like oh my goodness it's a manticore we're gonna die run away <laughs> So then I have to think then, what's the current problem? Because obviously she should be easily able to go steal this cow to get information, but there has to be some sort of problem on her hands that prevents her from being able to go and get this cow herself. So mm. what kind of thing is going on then? Oh, let's see. Maybe. Okay, so let's say that this cow is in a town where she had like previously made a really big mistake like she accidentally like ate someone or or you know like she couldn't control herself in this one moment of like fear or something and she committed a really bad crime and like could never show her face in that town again so mm. she she would have to have somebody go and retrieve that cow for her because she could never step in that town again okay so like her identity is compromised no one knew that she was there but then she revealed herself and now the town is like spooked high alert like if you see a manticore no questions asked just get rid of it kill it stab it burn it with fire exactly all right, yeah, no, that's a pretty good problem and why she needs adventurers to go take the cow in the first place. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we've learned quite a bit about Zalda the Spy, so we should head into a random encounter. So 
now this is the part where we get to do a short role play of the character. So you get to take on the part of Zalda. But now I have to wonder what the scene should be and uh, who Zalda's interacting with. Do you want it to be like a minion or an employee of Zalda talking to her? Or do you want Zalda to actually be interacting with an adventurer type character being able to give the quest as far as like, go get the cow? Yes, let's do Zelda. Can we do like her asking the players to go and get this cow? Does she have to reveal why she doesn't want to go to that town? It's up to Zelda. I mean, I, I figure as a spy boss, she's probably going to play some information close to the best. She might not tell them everything, uh, yeah. but probably enough that they need to know. So I'm trying to think I could uh, deploy Sonia as the adventurer character who's speaking with Zalda. Okay, let's do that. Just want to take a moment to recognize another sponsor of the show, Reaper Miniatures. They have been Texas Titans of the tabletop industry since 1994. They're right here in my backyard and they have an amazing warehouse and game store. They make everything from paints to gaming accessories, stream on Twitch with tutorials and interviews, and host the Reaper Con this year back in person from September 2nd to 5th, 2021 in Denton, Texas. Whatever system you're running, whatever game you're playing, Reaper has a miniature that has you covered. Want to include Randolph in your game? Then might I suggest looking at their catalog for SKU number 77661. Perhaps you need a Lord Grubbub. Check out SKU 02646. Are you in the market for your very own Skink Knows the Lich? Look no further than SKU number 77280. You know, every time you shop with them and you spend at least $40 on your purchase, they will give you a cool new mini for free. And this miniature of the month is always something new. And if you're wondering how you can enjoy the benefits from my sponsor, if you visit my website, you can find a link for our sponsorship and use my referral code link when you shop to help support sidekicks and side quests and get you some savings. By clicking that link on my website, it helps to track the traffic that our show directs towards Reaper Miniatures. The more traffic, the more that our Texas powers will be able to combine. So again, go check the link out on my website in order to use my special referral code and be sure to follow Reaper Miniatures on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube. And be sure to sign up for ReaperCon 2021 and tell them that Sidekicks and SideQuest sent you. So thank you very much to this sponsor and back to the podcast. After finishing her last adventure, uh, Sonia is making her way through the local area and through subtle clues left around in thieves can't she knows that there is a organization in the area that's looking for some outside help and so following the clues and making her way to the hideout of this organization she approaches a door as one of the minions kind of like knocks on the door there's a thud thud from the other side the minion opens the door and you see this tall red-haired strongly built but feminine fierce warrior woman walk through the door in this i imagine a dark room uh with dimly lit torches as uh sonia walks in and she says i'm here to see the boss so then me that's me yeah that's your Zelda. cue <laughs> yeah. so zalda uh comes out and says i'm looking for I'm looking for some extra help, and it would be nice to have another strong woman continue this uh, job that I that I am not able to finish myself. Sonia instinctively takes a step back and puts her hand on her sword, but seeing that you're talking and not immediately aggressive, she releases her hand from her sword and kind of relaxes a little bit, and she goes, Okay, sure, I could help you. What is it exactly that you're needing? Zelda uh, takes a step closer to her and says, I'm in need of a, a cow, <laughs> a, um, a very, very special cow um, that has witnessed something that uh, I am in need. I'm in need of that information and I need you to retrieve this cow for me. Uh, Sonia quizzically raises an <laughs> eyebrow and she goes, a cow. Truly, this cow must have seen something if you're in great need of it. 
Yes, uh, Zelda reassures her that she is, you know, the cow is not just another snack for her. This cow is extremely important and has information that her and her fellow spies uh, need to retrieve. So she continues to tell Sonia that if she is able to do this quest for her, she will uh, make sure that Sonia is rewarded appropriately. Sonia will nod and say, all right, give me the details and we'll consider it done. And she'll extend her arm out for a handshake, I guess, because that's what she's Zal- used to conclude. Zalda will with. give her, yeah, Zalda will give her her paw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, and scene. <laughs> This is this is seriously like I, I did not I I didn't know that this is what like D and D was you know like mm-hmm. I think oh my god like every kid should be playing this like seriously it 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 like builds imagination it was forcing me to like be creative like mm-hmm. what other things in this world like force you to be this creative you know like you got to come up with stories like right there you know right then and there that's hard. Exactly. Yeah, especially the dungeon master who has to run the game and run all the NPCs, which is why on this show we're trying to give tools and tips and tricks out there for dungeon masters, whether they're seasoned or first timers, that if they're like, oh, I need a spy boss, but I need an interesting spy boss who's not just a generic boring spy boss. Oh, Zelda the Manticore? That sounds pretty fun and interesting. I'm sure my characters would like that. And then, you know, groups around the world will be like, oh my gosh, we love Zelda the spy boss. She's so great. And then you'll <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to have that little affirmation, that little pat on the back, like, yeah, I helped make up Zelda. So that's super cool. That is super cool. I'm gonna like I'm gonna talk to my students about playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I think this is the perfect opportunity then as we head into the final thoughts section. So what did you, uh, clearly you've let us know your approval of a Dungeons and Dragons now as a hobby, but did you have any final thoughts as far as the show and uh, your experience on it here today? This was, like I said, like I said before, this is, it was really fun. I was really nervous coming into it because I, I literally like, I know nothing of Dungeons and Dragons, right? And so mm-hmm. I was nervous that I like wouldn't understand or like you know I didn't know the rules but it was very easy uh thanks to you uh to kind of like get into like you know get into that world and like start using my creativity to build this like incredible character so yeah it's it's very cool and it's fun because I kind of like want to put bits of myself into the character too right um and so it's just I don't know it was really fun I I it did not go at all like I thought it was going to go um it was it was very fun and you were so helpful um so yeah this is great like this is serious i'm going to tell everybody like you need to listen to this podcast this is really fun awesome well i'm glad to hear the uh stellar review uh certainly if more people could give me five stars on itunes or whatever (laughs) to help spread the word i would appreciate it Um, heck yeah yeah but certainly you know trying to do my part to spread the news and the word of the show on social media any little bit helps and certainly I'm glad that you had a positive experience and that you feel that you could approach this hobby a little more with optimism sure. and confidence. Certainly we want everyone to feel included and everyone to feel invited. I know I told Anson when he was on the show that, yeah, sometimes if you can't find anyone to play, sometimes you just have to be the one that starts and then just call your friends and be like, hey, I've decided I want to play D&D. So get some dice, get some pencil and paper, come over to my house on Saturday we're going to roll up characters and we're just going to all struggle as we figure this out. But once we do, we're going to be pros before too long. Yeah, no, that sounds, yeah, that sounds wonderful. I can even like, I know I'm always like seeing things from like an educator's perspective, but Mm -hmm. like how cool would it be if like an English teacher made a lesson like using Dungeons and Dragons characters or having the kids like create a a scene or a character, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's extremely creative stuff. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I think it's one of the best tools we can have. And I'm sorry it took me until college to find this hobby. I always kind of knew about it in the background, but I didn't actually get a chance to experience it until college and I was like oh this is cool I want to keep doing this so yeah yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely text my friends after this um I know one of my friends Ryan he plays like every Wednesday or Thursday um so I'm gonna text him and be like hey Anson and I need to get in on this because this, <laughs> this sounds like a lot of fun yeah for sure 
awesome. Well, before we go, I want to give you the soapbox. I want to give you the opportunity to plug anything you've got going on. If you want people to follow you on social media or whatever is close at your heart, let's go ahead and hear about it from the mouth of Elevia. Oh, that's really nice. Um, I always joke with Anson that I'm like trying to be a... <laughs> an influencer, but I'm really not. It, it's just for fun. Uh, but right now, you know, I'm just really, um, I'm just really passionate about what's going on in our country with uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Um, I've been to a couple of uh, peaceful protests, um, and I'm doing my part in trying to educate others on this matter. Um, and so, you know, I, I love having conversations with people about this. I'm not one of those that just comes at you with, you know, claws or comes out swinging. Like, I really think as an Educator. I mean, the only way to convince somebody of your, you know, of your stand is to listen and be polite and have civil conversations. And so, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm really focusing on right now. So thanks for the opportunity to, to talk about that. It's really yeah, nice. Not a problem. You know, we're all about loving our fellow human beings and the image and likeness that they're made in. And uh, I'm just trying to do my part to spread positivity around as it were. Thanks, Kurt. That's really important. That's really yeah. important. Well, I want to thank my guest again, Elvia, the school teacher with the Enigma violin, now brought forward to the real world, who has now in turn made her own character, Zalda, the spy boss. So yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. Can't wait to be able to see you and Anson again in person uh, once the age yeah. of the coronavirus has waned a little bit and everyone's safe to actually hang out and high five and stuff. Yes, same. We're looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sidekicks and Side Quests. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and Overcast. Or feel free to save the RSS feed to use the app of your choice. Visit our website, sidekicksandsidequests.com, for links, write ups of the NPCs, and to learn more about the show and the guests who have been on it. To stay up to date and interact via social media, you can follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit by searching for Side KQ Podcast. I would love to talk D&D and showcase your fan art stories of how you used our NPCs, discussions, and commentary. If you would like to hail the bod, send an email to sidekicksandsidequests at gmail.com. To help this show be the resource it's meant to be, I ask that you please leave a review on iTunes to help spread the word and share our show with your friends and family. Whether you're a veteran player or an aspiring dungeon master, there's something here for everyone, and I want to hear about it. Sidekicks and Sidequests is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy, meaning I'm not approved or endorsed by Wizards. Portions of the materials used are property of Wizards of the Coast, copyright Wizards of the Coast, LLC. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you at the pub next time. Bar to rock on one, two, one, two, three, four!